Today, I just want to show you the four latte art patterns that I use all day, every day, and I have them in my wheelhouse just to keep every customer happy. And as a barista, you should really start to work on just four easy patterns. Don't try and do something too crazy. And then once you've got those four, you can add extra details to them. So I'm just gonna do some split shots here, keep it nice and simple. Um, we're gonna pour into some little cups and we're gonna finish off with a latte. And all of these individual coffees are gonna help you progress little details and skills that you can use in making better latte art. Now everyone always wants to do the crazy swan or this really intricate, delicate pattern. Now for me, that's great, but I don't really focus on that. I focus on the day to day so that I can make sure that maybe on Valentine's Day, I can pour a beautiful harp. Um, if someone's wanting something a little bit extra special, make their day, I could mix maybe um, a rosetta in with um, a floating heart, or we can give someone a beautiful rosetta or a tulip. So let's just get some shots going on over here. We'll introduce that nice silky milk. We're gonna split our jugs. So we'll have a little bit of foam for two different coffees here. Getting the timing is, is the key part to any sort of coffee preparation and latte art. You don't want the milk to sit too long because it can be quite hard to work with. So I'm gonna set that aside just for a second. I'm gonna bring over our two espresso shots here. We've got our small little pitcher, which I'm going to just tap that milk, let the bubbles that have been rising to the top pop, and then I'm gonna give it a swirl, and I'm gonna flick off a little bit of that milk foam for my second cup. So here we go on the first one, the good old heart. I'm gonna swirl our espresso, swirl our milk, get in there, create our base, and then just come back to the middle and some wiggles and stop. And the bigger you stop, the bigger that pattern is gonna be and the wider and fatter it's gonna be. So if you pour faster, it's gonna be a much smaller, tighter heart. If you slow down, it's gonna push out nice and wide. And the wiggle, you can see that there are those individual lines that are happening. Now, I don't wanna sit around and think about that coffee too long because I've got some foam in here which is rising to the top and it might be settling. So I'm gonna add that back to my original milk jug or pitcher, tap out our bubbles and start our second pattern. Now we're gonna do it just for a traditional rosetta here. So it's the same as a heart. We're gonna pour in, go around the cup, get our canvas or our base, start to wiggle, but I'm gonna push forward then come back and finish off through the middle. So there we go, we've got the same technique of getting in there, creating a base and pushing forward and then wiggling back where with the heart, we stayed in the same um, spot and actually moved forward a little bit. And that's what made the pattern push out nice and wide. So there's two really simple ones. We're gonna try and add a little bit more to them, some more techniques. So the lines and the extra bit of um, pattern that's forming and bringing the, the, the pattern all the way around and sucking back through to the top of the pattern is, is helpful in taste. And a lot of people forget about that. They think that a pattern is just a pretty thing. Well, every time you have a line in your pattern, you're basically putting a piece of beautiful, silky, sweet milk into the top of your coffee. And then you're having a, a, a little bit of that coffee crema as well. So the customer, if they drink from the bottom of a pattern, is gonna have that velvety um, crema, which is blended in with that milk foam. And then they're gonna have um, a little bit of that coffee. And every sip will be a delight. So I do recommend having patterns to make a better tasting cup. It's not all foam or it's not all just the crema. So we've got two other ones here that we're gonna do. Again, get our nice silky stretched milk. If you need a hand on, on working on this, we do have a whole lot of videos about beginning, uh, how to start, how to understand how to stretch milk and temperatures and the amount of foam you need to deal with. So check out the other videos. They're certainly going to help you. And we've just got two little lattes here. Again, rest our milk for a little bit, let the bubbles come to the top, tap them out. I call that milk fireworks. We're gonna separate again a little bit of that milk foam off for our second cup. Put that over here. Tap and swirl. Now we're gonna do a tulip. So it's the same as a heart. We're gonna create that base. We're gonna go in, get our canvas ready, make a blob. Then I'm gonna stop, lift up, 
do another blob, stop, lift up, do blob, and do that three times, and then you finish through just like we did with the Rosetta. So a nice thin line all the way through to the top. There you go. So again, adding another element of lifting the jug out of the cup and then back in again. Now our final one is a bit of a combo of all of these together. So simply just by having the, the skills of being able to do a heart and create lines, doing a rosetta and being able to pull backwards and then move forward all the width of the cup forward and backwards, getting control in that. We've then got that same control with the chul, working our way backwards by lifting up out of the jug, or out of the, uh, the cup and dropping down a blob. We then can combine these together and we can do a rosetta with a floating tulip. So we're going to create our base here, get around the cup, create our little rosetta here, pull backwards, duck off to the side, go low, and finish off with a little floating heart there. I didn't quite get that blob as uh, detailed as I'd like, but that is a beautiful coffee that's going to make anyone's day. Hey Rod. Is that my glass, huh? Mate, there you go. There's a rosetta with a little floating heart for you. Oh, that's amazing, mate. Thank you. Bye-bye day. Enjoy it. Appreciate it. And that's what it's all about. You want someone to feel the love that you put into a cup of coffee. And it's really simple to have those four patterns in your wheelhouse for any customer. So I urge you to concentrate on just practicing these basic patterns and you're gonna impress so many more people. You're gonna impress your friends at home if you're making a cup of coffee for them on the Saturday morning or whenever you have them over. But you're not trying to get too fancy in doing three rosettas or a swan or these crazy horses and all this other stuff, which you can do, it just takes a long time to get there. And I don't want you to feel like you are struggling to become a great barista in an industry that is really focused around just that crazy latte art. So practice these patterns. When you've nailed them, you are a great barista. You can handle a whole range of products. So from me to you, I'll be impressed if you can send us these kinds of photos. Um, if you've got any other tips on these kinds of drinks, perhaps if you've got some extra little bits of detail that you would add into how to make these um, patterns even more perfect, put a comment down below so we can share that with everybody and they can learn to how to make a full range of great latte art patterns. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Uh, it does really help our channel. We love when you do subscribe and we can keep sharing um, amazing content with you so thanks very much for watching i hope that's helped you get some better latte art and a pattern or a skill set to work towards all right we'll catch you next time cheers